an electrical engineer, and with the firm he works with, he often has to travel over to Jerusalem. His, uh, his company has an office that's over in, in Israel. And so he'll travel to Jerusalem quite often, actually I think it's more Tel Aviv that he'll travel to. But even on those trips, he made sure, the first time that he was over there, to go and visit Bethlehem. He really wanted to go and visit Bethlehem and to see the place where Jesus was born. And my, my cousin went and there, he went to Bethlehem, he went to the Basilica of the Nativity of our Lord and visited the place. And then when he came back home, I was asking him about his trip that time, and he said, you know, I was actually a little bit disappointed when I went to Bethlehem. Because now there's this big church that's built over the site where Jesus is born. I wanted to go and to see, like, the reality of how Jesus came into our world. Like, I wanted to see that manger and see that cave and to really enter into that space of how Jesus was born. And now there's a church that's built over the top of this. Granted, this is a beautiful church. I'm not knocking the church and saying that we shouldn't have a church built over this place. But my cousin had this sentiment that he wanted to truly see how Jesus came into this world and to truly see that place where Jesus was born. And my cousin is not alone in this sentiment. There was actually one guy who had this exact same sentiment. His name is St. Francis of Assisi. I think you've heard of this guy, right? You've heard of St. Francis of Assisi? St. <laughs> Francis of Assisi had this same feeling. That as he heard the stories of Jesus Christ being born, and he heard about the shepherds, and he heard about Mary and Joseph, and he realized that there was this cave, and how much poverty that was surrounded by Jesus' birth, St. Francis, who was this lover of poverty, wanted to really see this place, to truly see the poverty into which God became man. And so in 1223, the year 1223, St. Francis went to this town of Greccio in Italy, and he talked to one of his friends there named John, and he asked this local man named John to help him realize this desire in his heart to bring to life the memory of that babe born in Bethlehem, to see as much as possible with my own bodily eyes the discomfort of his infant needs, how he lay in the manger, and how, with just animals standing by, he was laid upon a bed of hay. This comes from some of the writings and the memoirs of St. Francis. And so John put his stuff together. And John built up this first nativity scene. And they got it ready for Christmas Day. And so on Christmas Day in 1223, St. Francis got to see the very first nativity scene as we know them now today. And the people who remember this event, they write about it, that all those present experienced a new and indescribable joy in the presence of the nativity scene. The priest then solemnly celebrated the Eucharist over the manger, showing the bond between the incarnation of the Son of God and the Eucharist. And I reflect on this experience of my cousin and these thoughts of St. Francis, because at the beginning of Advent, Pope Francis, I'm sure we've all heard of Pope Francis too, right? <laughs> Pope Francis actually wrote all of us a letter. You got a letter from Pope Francis at the beginning of this month because it was addressed to every Catholic in the world. And in this letter, he reflected on the nativity scene. And he had these thoughts about what the nativity scene means for us today. The first one was almost 800 years ago. But we still set them up today. We have the one here in front of the altar. We have the one out in the narthex space. I'm sure many of us have set these up in our homes. I actually bought my first one this year. I didn't own my own until I read this letter, and Pope Francis is basically saying, you go get a nativity scene. <laughs> yes, Holy Father, I will go get a nativity scene. <laughs> and Pope Francis reflects as he, see, as he reads these memories of the first nativity scene, that this is how our tradition began, with everyone gathered in joy around the cave, with no distance between the original events and those sharing in its mystery. That was ultimately the desire in St. Francis' hearts. That was, the, that was the desire in my cousin's hearts as he went to Bethlehem. That's the desire in my hearts. And it's this desire in all of our hearts to have no distance between the original events and us sharing in the mystery, sharing in the reality of what it is 
that our God was born as an infant, a human infant that could cry even louder than that. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm so glad we have these little ones to hear these cries. It helps us bring us into this moment that our God sounded like that. Our God sounded like an infant crying. It's a beautiful reality that we can behold today. It helps bridge that distance already to hear these little ones crying out because that's how Jesus cried out. But what does it mean for us more today? Pope Francis guides us into what the nativity scene means for us today. And just a little sidebar, when Pope Francis is thinking about the nativity scene, he's not thinking quite like what we typically set up here in Chanhassen, Minnesota. We get pretty basic when it comes to the nativity scene. If you've been anywhere in the Hispanic culture, or South America, or even in Italy, they will set up whole cities as their nativity scene. And you actually have to find within the city where exactly Jesus, Mary, and Joseph are within the scene. And so when Pope Francis is reflecting on the nativity scene, he's thinking of this whole city event. But it still means just as much when we have our simple scenes set up here at the altar, here in the narthex. Now Pope Francis first tells us that the nativity scene helps us to relive the history of what took place in Bethlehem. And as we set it before our eyes, it touches our hearts and makes us enter into salvation history as contemporaries of this event that is living and real in a broad gamut of historical and cultural contexts. Just as we could search throughout so many different cities trying to find Jesus, Mary, and Joseph, our God came into each culture. Our God came into human history so that we could always find him. No matter what culture, no matter what situation, no matter what city we might be in, it helps us remember that salvation history touches us here and now as we see the scene set up before us. But Pope Francis goes on and he says that the sympathy scene shows God's tender love. The creator of the universe lowered himself to take up our littleness. The creator of the universe was one that you and I can hold in our hands. Everyone, the one who made me, the one who made the stars, the one who made this entire universe, became so little, became so small, so that he could draw close to us. We see the desire in God's heart for us, so that he could be held by us. And so it touches our hearts to be able to see this scene where we could actually reach out and touch and hold that image of the infant Jesus, but realizing that this is how close God wants to come to me. And so Pope Francis goes on that the divinity scene invites us to feel and to touch the poverty that God's son took upon himself in the incarnation. And it summons us to follow him along the path of humility, poverty, and self-denial that leads from the manger in Bethlehem to the cross. And it asks us to meet him and serve him by showing mercy to those of our brothers and sisters in greatest need. As we see that God is going to make himself little to meet me in my need, to meet me in my need to be let out of darkness and into light, to be led out of the loneliness that I experience in my life and to know that God is always with me as one that I can hold. This leads me on a new path. And this leads me to live as the one whom I hold in my hands, the one whom I hold in my heart. And I become like the one that I hold in my hands, like the one that I hold in my heart. I take on that humility, that poverty, and that self-denial that's gonna be able to recognize the little ones around me. And not just our little ones physically around us, but the ones most in need, the ones without a home, the ones who are fleeing from war and poverty, the ones who are seeking their own way out of darkness and into life, those who are seeking just that simple human connection with someone. Here, as I receive this connection with my God, I have that confidence and I am led to live in that way that God has shown me, to show that mercy, 
to this one who I see before me. That's how the Nativity scene helps us, as we see this littleness and this poverty of our God coming to meet us. We are then able to see the littleness and the poverty of those around us and know that we can enter into it because our God has entered into our life. Ultimately, we see here in the Nativity scene what happens here in the Eucharist. Jesus lowers himself to us. Jesus, who has already been born into this world, who has gone through the cross, risen from the dead, ascended into the heavens, Jesus lowers himself to be with us anew. And not just to dwell with us, but to dwell in us. The full reality of why Jesus is born, to offer himself on the cross, to free us from sin and death, to lead us out of darkness and into light, and to lead us into his new life by his resurrection and his ascension. All of this is present here on this altar is present here in this most holy sacrament of the Eucharist because it is the full person of Jesus who comes to us here in the Eucharist. Body, blood, soul, and divinity. Jesus is really and truly coming into our lives as one that we can see and one that comes in littleness, coming as our food under the signs of bread and wine. So as we receive this new life that comes down to, to meet us in our hearts, we are filled with his love. We are filled with his new life to go and meet our brothers and sisters who are little, who are in need, who are in need of Jesus to come to them. And we can be that presence of God that comes to them, that one who becomes little to meet them in their littleness. We can be the ones who become poor to meet those who are poor. Because our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, though he was rich and full of divinity in the heavens, came to take on our humanity and was born in littleness, laid in a manger, so that you and I could become full of life, full of the divine life. So God takes on our human nature and leads us into his divine nature. So what we see here in the Nativity scene, what we see here on this altar in the Eucharist, and what we celebrate here in this Christmas, this Nativity of our Lord, is truly transforming. It transforms us and leads us to imitate what we see, and truly to become Him, to become Jesus, Him whom we receive.